Alright, welcome to River Church Wednesday night Bible study. We're actually in a place where we're allowed to meet now. Give the Lord a praise offering. Yay! Boy, this sounds like a big crowd. When it's this... <laughs> it, we, we do have a good sized crowd. And actually you guys are doing a fairly decent job of staying distant. Although Sam's getting close to Tim and that's just a little weird for two men to be that. He's my brother. I haven't seen him <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just having a little bit of fun there. You know you didn't. Your name Larry? <laughs> we're all good up here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're socially distant up here. Jan's doing good, and so is Angie. And actually, Linda and uh, Becky's pretty good, and Linda and Betty's all right. Well, Sam. <laughs> I sleep this late, so I got it. <laughs> Too late, it's on the video. <laughs> no erasing that. Wow, they are husband and wife. <laughs> they are husband and wife. Over 50 years, husband and wife. Do not get Angie started. This is our first Wednesday back. I don't need Angie started on this. Praise God. She's been needed this for a while. She's like, it's been over two months. I need one. Oh, praise the Lord. That being said, let's get into our study on transitional seasons. We're continuing on transitional seasons. And uh, start off tonight, we're going to talk about a transitioning season versus just a season in general. Anyone have any thoughts or anyone want to comment on that? What's the difference between a transitional season and just a season in general? A calendar season, so to speak. Okay, no one wants to comment on that. <laughs> All right then. Um, in short, <clears throat> and this is amazing, I love this because my wife wrote this, and you guys know our little, well, her misunderstanding of when fall starts. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, everyone say, hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. Angie Wilson's watching. She said hello to everybody. Thought we'd let her know, but we all said hi. We miss her. All right, so a calendar season is 13 weeks, 90 days. Okay. Uh, can it be longer? Can a, uh, a season be longer? Yes. A season, even a calendar, can be like years, such as years in a famine or a drought. Um, a, a, a rainy season can last several months in some countries. Um, and actually the Bible even talks about so many, a season of drought, a season of good and a season of famine and drought. Remember with the, with the um, story of Joseph and the Pharaoh. Remember he had the dream, Pharaoh had the dream, what's it mean? Joseph said uh, so many years of plenty and then so many years of drought. Those were two different seasons, seasons of plenty, seasons of drought. So uh, a count, you can have, the actual four seasons of a calendar, 13 weeks per season, but then you also have other type of seasons that can take place um, in a calendar event, like I said, like a famine, drought, or a rainy season, that sort of thing. Um, planting season, harvesting season, to come in a little bit you know, closer to home here in Morocco, so that sort of thing. So how long is a transitioning season? Anyone want to guess on that? Depends on how long it takes to learn the lessons. <laughs> yeah. That's the best answer. It depends on how long it takes you to learn your lesson. <laughs> because it can become a very, very horrific cycle. Um, a transition season is the process of moving you from one state or position to a new state or position. Um, I've heard people say before, people would change when the pain of staying still and staying the same is greater than the pain of changing. And sometimes God has to do that to us. He's trying to get us to change. We don't want to change because that's what human beings are. Human beings don't like to change. We do things the same way all the time. Anyone, anyone know what I'm talking about? I always do it that way. Someone says, you messed this up. No, I didn't because whenever I do that, I always do it this way. And I know I didn't do that. Anyone, can anyone attest to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, for example, with me, Thanksgiving, 
<laughs> it's simple. Turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, corn, broccoli, green bean casserole, pumpkin pie, and usually uh, rolls. Don't change it. Yep. Do not change it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we instituted the, my birthday is practice Thanksgiving in my house. Because my wife would say, let's do this for Thanksgiving this year. Why? There is no reason to change my Thanksgiving dinner. And, and I'm not laughing about that. In fact, my wife will tell you when it comes to Thanksgiving, if we're not having Thanksgiving at our house, I still buy Thanksgiving dinner. In case we go to someone else's house and they get funky with the Thanksgiving dinner, I can come back and have real Thanksgiving at my house. <laughs> yep. Don't mess with it. And so she wanted to try new things. I'm like, look, okay, every year on my birthday, that's practice Thanksgiving. If you got something different, and she's like, it's not weird. It's just you don't normally do it for Thanksgiving. I go, yes, yeah, so it's weird to Thanksgiving. So it's weird. <laughs> May not be weird any other day here, but Thanksgiving ain't supposed to be there, so it's weird. Don't try to mess with my Thanksgiving dinner. So my birthday every year is practice Thanksgiving. And if she's got something new she wants to try, you try to practice Thanksgiving, I'll let you know if it's okay to put it into Thanksgiving. And I'm going to have my Thanksgiving dinner. So I don't want to change that. <laughs> to me, that's a difficult process. But I also realized that when I got married, do I have to separate you two ladies? The social distancing isn't enough. I feel like I'm back in youth. <laughs> I'm with the adults. They haven't been together so long. Got it. <laughs> Praise God. They were just together Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Expressing those two. <laughs> so, um, a transitioning season is a process of moving from one state or position to a new state or position. Don't, uh, to me, when I got married, I realized marriage, there are certain things, you know, there are certain fight, battles you fight, certain ones you don't. And I found a, a compromise for my Thanksgiving. Because I think it's stupid to like, really have a, an argument with your spouse over Thanksgiving dinner. But I also think it's stupid to change Thanksgiving dinner. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I found this compromise. <laughs> it was a transition for me. <laughs> and I found a way to go through that transition. Um, it could be a physical move, location, physical body change, um, mental or emotional change, spiritual change, or any combination of these. Example also is weight loss. Have you ever not seen someone for a few weeks or months and all of a sudden you see them and you're like, who are you? And what happened to the rest of my friend? You ever been there? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and then, you know, and, Usually, if we haven't lost the weight, we're like, wow, that was fast. How'd you do that? They're like, I haven't seen you in six months. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> do I have to move you up here to the front? You've already got Angie going. I'm, we're, what, five minutes into service? Ten minutes into service? It's all going. <laughs> Praise God, sis. <laughs> I'm gonna have it. I got. See, I got more chairs up here in the front. Those are too tall for you. I'll put you up there. Yeah. We'll lift you. Or there's that chair over there too. We're in the hole and the rum for. Praise God. Anyone ever uh, see, especially weight loss, uh, the commercials? You you can lose ten pounds in the first two weeks. For free, yeah. Like, I didn't know it cost me money to lose weight. <laughs> um, so here's one real quick. Who can answer this question? How long does it take, or how long do do mo How long does it take to break a bad habit? Thirty days. Thirty days. Three weeks. It's it's like seven or nine days. I forget. Seven or nine days. Okay. So actually, we did some research on this. So the myth is twenty one days, three weeks. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people are like, sounds holy, doesn't it? It's three weeks of seven. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you know, who can't do something for 21 days, three weeks, right? Well, we say that in teaching to get, um, my wife used to say in teaching, uh, you know, just to get to the next break, you know. <laughs> Can I make it just to the next time that we get off for Thanksgiving, we get off for, you know, Labor Day, we get off for Christmas, we get, you know, all these other things. So um, we're like, who can't last that? You know, 21 days, That's that. we could do that. You know, four weeks we can do that. Well, actually, the science behind breaking bad habits, if you really study it, says nine weeks, 66 days, actually, which is a little, nine times seven is 63. It's actually 66 days. I thought it was Linda's phone with the noise going on. No, it's not 8 o'clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know what it's like. Oh, uh, Angela Wilson's been commenting, laughing so hard right now. <laughs> My wife, is he going to get this under control? Angela, probably oh not. Nope. Not going to happen. <laughs> if she can hear Angie Golick snorting, chortling right now, Angela Wilson's chortling wherever she's at. I guarantee you that. They were just buddies on that. But no, the actual, you know, it's actually a little more than nine weeks. It's 66 days. Can anyone tell me the the significance of 66? No. How about of six? What does six represent? Man. Man. Flesh. Thank you. So, double flesh. 66 is double flesh. Yeah. So, um, another transition that humans go through. What about pregnancy? <laughs> well, here's my thing on that, which they always say nine months, which I get it because no month is actually exactly so many days, but nine months, you want to get technical, is like just shy of pregnancy, which is actually, how, who can tell me how many weeks pregnancy is? Long. <laughs> 40. 40, thank you. I'm, oh, Betty, that was awesome. Who can tell me how long pregnancy is? Long. I was waiting for you to say two. I'm like, two what? Too long. <laughs> um, 40 weeks. Now, here's the beauty of that. God designed pregnancy, am I right? That's just the kids praising God. Let them praise God, right? So, um, God designed pregnancy. Pregnancy takes 40 weeks in the human. Okay? So, when you study out numbers in the Bible, 40 is a representation of a transition, of a transitional season. It should take, you know, for how long was Jesus in the desert um, when, he, when he went on his fast? 40 days. 40 days. How long was Noah in the ark for the flood? 40 days. How long was Moses on the mountain two different times getting the Ten Commandments? Oh, are we finding a theme with this? In fact, here's another one for Moses. Moses' life, how long did Moses live to be? 120. And what's amazing is, uh, roughly at the age of 40 is when he kills the Egyptian and runs into the desert. And then at the age of 80 is when he goes back into Egypt to leave God's children out of Egypt. And then dies at the age of 120. He's separated into three sets of 40. How long were the children of Israel told they had to wander in the wilderness? 40 years. 40 years. But that's coincidence because God's all full of coincidence, right? 40 represents a transitional season in the Bible. How much does your life change and transition after 40 weeks of pregnancy? Whole bunch. <laughs> Whole lot, isn't it, Sam? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> Let alone two 40 week processes of pregnancy really changed your life, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, why do you think I'm still in the same house? <laughs> Cheaper that way. That right. I don't even want to think what it was like for my dad and mom having 10 kids. 
<laughs> Praise God. I'm like, I don't know what you two didn't want to learn. But <laughs> 40 times of transitional season, you still, you know. Saint. Saint. <laughs> For example, at the end of the 40 weeks, you're no longer a couple now, are you? Now you're a family. You're a trio. What did you say to is Linda still going? Yes. Hey, one more strike, Linda. One more, and you're up here on the table with me. Four hundred weeks. Four hundred weeks. My mom was pregnant. It felt like four hundred months. It felt like four hundred months. I'm sure. I never figured out on the last one. I had a sister who was about 15, and my mom's like, Hey, we're gonna have another baby. She goes, Are you serious? <laughs> Real, seriously? <laughs> my oldest said the same thing when I was bringing up Meg. Your oldest said the same thing? <laughs> she was 15. It was my sister Chandra. I don't know if she's watching you today, but it was my sister Chandra. Are you serious? She looks on like a pain. <laughs> another? So, um, at the end of those 40 weeks, you're no longer just a woman or a wife. Now you're a mother. Yeah. Um. She sounds excited about it. What? She sounds real excited about it. I know. She did. Yeah. Oh, mom. <laughs> now, this is our notes. Like I said, my wife typed these up. Um, pregnancy changes a woman's identity to mother. And it's biblical for a woman to be a wife first. But when you become a mother, it is harder because the kids are so much cuter when they're sleeping compared to your husband. <laughs> well, you laugh at Sam. Your wife thinks the same thing. Same with you, Tim. Your wife thinks the same thing. Kids are cuter sleeping than you. Am I wrong, Robin? But after they leave, after after they leave, I'm mean, not back in the, the game again. She still thinks the kids are cuter sleeping than you. They're, they're way home. It doesn't matter. She still thinks they were cuter sleeping than you. Viewership's down this week. <laughs> but that being said, we see this as 40 weeks as a transition. 40, the number 40 represents transition in the Bible. It can be 40 days, 40 weeks, 40 years, as we see with the children of Israel. But that's a representative of a transition. Now some people say, well, I was in a transition one time for 60 weeks. Guess you didn't learn your lesson. It could have been done in 40. <laughs> I got a question. What's that number, the 6666? Where'd that come from? Revelation. <laughs> this is the number. Why, why six? That's an off number. I know seven's a perfect number. But what's, what's six what's represents it? the flesh. It represents sin. It represents humanity. Okay, so the, the mark of the beast is uh, triple six, a trinity, or in other words, a perfect trinity of sin. It's the perfectedness of sin. It's a trinity of it. It's like a, it's like, for lack of a better term, a godhead of sin. Okay? And so it becomes this perfected state of the fullness of sin. You got me now? All right. So, um, in our study, uh, examples of transition season in the Bible, um, number 40 just kept popping up like crazy. Now, not all transitional seasons have to be a, an equivalent of 40. Um, and like I said before, sometimes they could, they could have been some form of a 40, but you didn't change. Okay? <laughs> so don't put it on God if it lasted longer than 40 days, 40 weeks, or whatever, okay? Because here's the, here's the problem. I like to think of it exactly like a wheel. God's bringing us through a life, and we reach, we reach a point. We're going up, you know, we're following the path. And we come to the point to make a decision. And we don't listen to God, we make the wrong decision, so we veer off the path. And that long, wrong decision just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse, like telling a lie. Then you got to tell five lies and 20 lies, and you're caught in it, and then you're in trouble. And you hit rock bottom, 
And so you turn back to God, you start listening again, you get right back on the path, and what happens? You come back to that same point. Okay, this is that, that circle is that transitional season. And when you come back to that same point, generally it's like a 40-day, 40 40-week 40 thing. If you make the wrong decision again, guess what? You're going back around that circle. Or you can make the right decision and move forward to the next thing. The children of Israel, when they came to... Think about this. They were at the promised land. The children of Israel were. You ever thought about that? It didn't take them long. They were there. They went in and spied it out, came back. Two of them said, we can do this. The other two were like, no, no way. We can't do this. So God's like, fine. You're literally at the door. All you have to do is walk in, and you don't want to. So guess what? You're going to start traveling for 40 years. And then they came back around again. And there they are, same spot, at the door of the promised land. I just I found it interesting that when Moses sent spies into the promised land, they were there for 40 days. The spies in the promised land were in there for 40 days. Wow. Pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. And when they came back a second time, what the children of Israel do? I ain't making that mistake again, am I? I just spent 40 years in a transitional season. I'm going in this time. <laughs> so, um, what does the number 40 mean when you really start breaking it down to actual meaning of what it represents? Usually it's representative of testing, trial, or a probation period. Um, what this means is that God needs us to focus our faith and our obedience during this transition to prepare you for the longer season. Quite often, and... Um, Someone, you may have had someone speak a, a prophetic word to you, or you've spoken a prophetic word to somebody, and God will tell them, you're going to be in a season of rest. Quite often, like in a prophetic word, it comes out as a season of rest, as a transitional season. And during that time, they'll say, you need to really dig into the Bible. You really need to get into your prayer closet. You need this and this. And what it is, is during that time of rest and transition, you need to get yourself right you need to get yourself ready. You need to get your phone on silent. $5. Do what? Five dollars. What's that? Praise God. Make sure mine's on silent. What's five dollars? Praise phone the Lord. Off, that's $5. Oh, phone off. That's five. I don't know, Chuck. I'll let you handle that with Benny. I ain't getting that. I had it but, old, but it was too loud. You're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Trust me, it's not as loud as Linda tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You've been good the last 10 minutes, Linda. It was the first 15 that was. <laughs> but that being said, you someone may have said that to you. God wants you at a time of rest or you're in a hallway waiting for God to open the door. That's a transitional season. You need to be digging deeper into that well of God. Dig down into that well, get down that water, and get refreshed through the through worship, through prayer, through reading the Bible. It goes back to what we said before about sanctification and the process of sanctification. You never stop. A time of rest doesn't mean, oh, I don't have to read my Bible for this time. Because now that transitional season of a time of rest, which might have been 40 days, has just become 80 days. Because I don't have to read my Bible right now. There's never a time where you don't have to read the Bible. There's never a time where you don't have to pray. There's never a time you don't have to worship. I'm going to answer that question for you right now. If anyone comes to you and says you're in a time of rest, you don't need to pray or read, run. All right? Um, um, okay, so um, this here is a little testimony of my wife. She is a, it's a sports metaphor she wrote about. She likes sports, even before she met me. She likes sports. <laughs> I found something out. If you find a woman who likes hockey, you have found a sports fan. And my wife likes hockey. You want to know what's entertaining? I don't know if she's still that way, but when we first got married, when we first dated and first got married, we go to a hockey game. If we were on the glass, she's beating on it, yelling at the people. You yeah, boom! I'm like, <laughs> we have friends who are like, hey, we got tickets. You guys want to go to a hockey game? Bring Jane. <laughs> we had some friends who had season tickets that are like anytime you two want to come or at least her come on <laughs> because when you have a, a woman um, 
who likes hockey, just that's it's different. Anyway, um, <laughs> but um, we we would occasionally watch documentary shows, and there was one show that she really liked called Hard Knocks. It's about training camp in the NFL. And um, I'll never forget the first time she watched it because they show you the, the humanity side of these NFL players and what they like to do. And I'm doing this, you know, my mom passed away, and I'm hoping I make it to the NFL because I'm going to honor my mom. And, all that. and she was, like, really investing in these. She's like, these aren't characters in the book. These are real people, so I can invest in them. And then, like, one episode, they're like, these three guys that she really invested in all got cut. <laughs> they're no longer in the NFL. <laughs> One guy got injured, they're like, okay, as soon as your injury's over, you're cut, and you're out of the NFL. Right. And so, um, mm -hmm. uh, she would get really attached to the players and the stories. And she discovered that there are two opinions about preseason football or spring training in baseball. Number one, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the fan, the wins and losses don't count. They don't get a championship. Um, it's just, it's nothing. It's a waste. Um, the big-time players, it's a waste of my time. I'm not going to play in preseason or spring training and hurt myself and lose out on a big payday. You know, um, I've already got my place on the team, you know. I don't have to worry. You know, when uh, Peyton Manning was playing for the Colts, did he have to worry about whether he was going to lose his starting position when he first got there? No, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, to put it in terms for you, Sam, are there any drivers in NASCAR that have to worry about whether or not they lose their ride? Or are there some drivers right now that, oh, no, they're going to be driving next year for that car. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain ones that a little bit and other ones. Now, you have the other side of it, which is it can make or break the season or career for somebody. Um, are you going to get cut from the team? You can literally be a person who came from nothing. You got... Signed to this NFL team, you've made a couple of paychecks, but not much because it's preseason. And all you got to do is get to the, once I get to the start of the season, I know that I'm good for at least a few weeks and I'm going to make some money. But you get cut in preseason. It's rough. It's rough. And those guys who get cut like that, they're not making much. <laughs> so that in this time of preseason, um, it could they could make the team or get cut. They could go to the major leagues or they could go to the minor leagues. Um, they could even just be head home forever, you know. Um, it could be the end of your career or your season because of an injury. So spring training or preseason in the NFL is a transitional season. And it's very, uh, most transitional seasons tend to be volatile. Am I going to learn my lesson or am I not going to? I'll never forget watching one year this guy was trying to make it. He was actually from um, uh, the UK, United Kingdom. And he was actually um, a bobsledder in the Olympics. He's fast. He's trying to make it as a running back. And he was one of those people that may or may not make it. Well, he kept parking in the wrong parking spot. And they told him, you cannot park there. That's actually a parking spot that was bought by somebody so, and, who's a big wig. And they come here and they can park here and go inside and do stuff. They literally pay for that parking spot. So you cannot park there. And everyone's like, what's well, a big, huge parking spot? It doesn't matter. If, if I pay for it, I pay a lot of money, guess what? If I show up, my spot better be empty, right? Yeah, some people will say, well, that's just too much money to spend. It may be too much money to spend. But the fact of the matter is, if it belongs to someone, it belongs to someone, right? Well, this guy did it one too many times. The coach is like, we've warned him five times. What's he doing? And the owner goes, you know what? We've warned him enough. And we kept telling and we find him. The first time we let go, the last four times we find him, he doesn't even have a paycheck anymore unless he makes the beginning of the season. He has to play three weeks before he ever gets enough money to pay the next fine. He goes, you know what? Just cut him. He literally lost his dream and his chance because he wasn't following the rules. Now, we may think it's something stupid, like don't go out drinking at the local bar and getting getting liquored up and drunk and stumbling home. Well, a few drinks, getting drunk once ain't going to send me to hell. Are you sure? Because <laughs> if you're 100% positive, yeah, do it all you want. But if you don't know, and you don't, and actually I would err on the side of caution on that one, don't do it. You may say, oh, I'm going to hang with my friends. And, you know, when you're in high school or may have kids or grandkids in school, they're like, 
Well, my friends, they were just doing drugs at the one party one time. Yeah, but what if that's the party that the cops decided to come in and bust them all? It doesn't matter how innocent you were, whether you taken them or not, you were there. And even if you get exonerated and let go, you had to go through that whole process, didn't you? So, um, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a difficult thing, and you have to understand, when you're in a transitional season, you can do what you need to, or you can just let it, you can be flippant about it, let it go. Right now, our church is a transitional season. We, we're still working with the insurance company because of the wind damage to the roof and can't occupy the building, so we're here. We, we're in a transitional season. I could say, well, just stay home. I keep doing video. But I also <laughs> believe in the scripture where it says, for the sake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. So we come here now. We have found a way in this transitional season to dig in deeper. And I want us to remember that. I want us to continue to dig in deeper. You know, look at it like tr spring training or preseason with football. It's not... Oh, well, I'm going to be there, and I'm on the team anyway. Don't think of it that way. Think of it as, i got to make the team. Because the way we respond to this is going to determine what the outcome is going to be with the building when we're done and with the insurance company. And I'm not saying that the more you pray, the more money we get. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this. Once it's all said and done and we come out of this transitional season, the way we impact this town and this county and this region for God is going to determine how we respond to not having a church right now. I was like, you know what? We're going to respond good to this. We're over here in the fellowship hall. We got the prayer room lined up. It looks great, Paul. <laughs> we got the prayer, prayer room all looking great. I'm like, yeah, we got a prayer room. We got an epicenter to kick this thing off. And now we can't even go in to use the prayer room. And I know the board's like, you spent that money on the prayer room, Pastor, and it's just sitting there empty. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus loves you? Because <laughs> this virus hit, and now we don't get to use We could have used it even for two months. Or a month and a half or something. Well, uh, uh, mid-March to about the first of May, so a month and a half. We didn't get to use it that month and a half because... The Rona. <laughs> I don't even want to call it the, the Rona. It doesn't get the respect of all the other names. Anyway, so, so you know, that's where we're in a transitional season. How are we going to respond to it? How are we going to respond to it? It's our choice as believers on how we respond to it. Are we going to respond positive or negative? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? I'm reminded, and I know some people are like, oh, he referenced a movie. <laughs> I'm reminded of a movie. I'm not going to say the name, but most of you probably know it. But there was a point where they're going after these bad guys. And the one person who's the, the wise, older, weathered, says, the way you beat this person is if he hurts you, you take him out completely. He puts one in the hospital, you put him in the morgue. And then later on, towards the end of the movie, that wise weathered man gets, they come after him. And he's sitting there getting ready to pass away. He looks at the guy, he goes, now what are you prepared to do? Before we said if they go in the hospital, we put theirs in the morgue. Well, now they're putting yours in the morgue. Now what are you going to do? Well, look, Satan thinks they got the, he's got this church beat. They don't have a building to meet in anymore. So now what are we going to do? We're in this transition. We're in it together. And to go back to something I preached when I first came here, I had no clue how real that message was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get busy. We got to dig in deeper. We got to dig down to these wells, just like they did with the wells of Abraham, where they had to stop them and they had to redig them. We got to really dig down these wells. Who's going to go to work with me? Don't you dare say what Bonnie said, Sam. Or Paul. <laughs> Who's ready to go to work with me and dig these wells? Amen. That's where we're at, church. That's where we're at. We're in this transition. What are we going to do about it? 
Transition seasons are like spring training baseball and preseason football. What we do in that season before the season matters. Our prayers matter. Finding our purpose. The planning and prepping. Going through the process will dictate what place we will go next. God may honor what we have done and move us on to the next season. Or he may see more work is needed and you have to go through the transition again. I don't like that, do you? <laughs> Go through it again. Let me tell you something. We're going to reach a point where we're standing at the entrance of the Canaan land. I am not going to turn around for any one of you. I will kick you out of the church. <laughs> Just so you know, okay? <laughs> oh, man. So, um, David, I got your back, my man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Way to go, David. Thank you. <laughs> um, some other, like I said, some examples. Jesus in the wilderness, the temptation, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, Mark 1, Luke 4. Um, Moses at Mount Sinai. I love the Moses at Mount Sinai 40-day transition. Because you have Moses and the elders who go halfway up the mountain. They have a meal and a time of praise and worship. And the glory of God descends and starts moving, and they're watching these physical manifestations of the glory of God, like from me to you. And then God says, okay, Moses, I need you to come up further and send the elders back down. So he sends the elders back down, and Moses goes up further for 40 days and nights. And now you had all these elders who saw the glory of God moving, the physical manifestations of God, and they knew it was God, and it wasn't just tricks, you know, and all this other stuff. And what do they do during that 40 days and nights? Have a party, make a golden calf, and start worshiping a false god. Because that's what you do, right? They failed that 40-day transition. So what happens? Moses comes down. Some of them drink the golden calf. Some get swallowed up into the ground. Moses has to get the country right with God again. God's ready to lose it on. That's when God says, look, I'm just going to send an angel ahead of them into the promised land, and I'll take everybody out, and they'll have the promise, but they won't have my presence. And Moses is like, whoa, time out. No. <laughs> I ain't doing that. So Moses, once the nation turns around and gets forgiven by God, Moses goes back up the mountain for another 40 days and nights. But here's what's awesome about the second 40 days and nights. If you study the Bible, it says... Moses was up there 40 days and nights with no food or water. Now, science will tell you that's impossible. He, had, he, he would have died. But here's the thing. When we are 100% sold out to God, and we start getting into his presence on a regular basis, if a situation comes up where we are being withheld from food, water, so on and so forth, God is going to sustain us. God is going to be there to lift us up and keep us going. Look at the conditions that the, the Jewish nation went through during World War II, and those people survived. If you looked at the way what they went through today, probably half the people in this room would not have survived. And I'm not bashing on anybody or talking to anybody else. What they went through, praise God, I, I don't know if I could have survived it. But God sustained them. Those were his people, his chosen people. Moses up on the mountain for 40 days and nights. God sustains them. There's no food and water. And this time when he comes down, what happens? They can't even look on his face. When we start getting into God's presence and getting into the glory that strong, where he starts to change our physical appearance, that's when we can really take this world for Jesus. But it takes work getting there. It doesn't have to be, well, it happened to Moses, it can't happen to me. Yeah, it can. It absolutely can. It can happen to every one of us in here. The question is, how sold out are you to God? How willing are you to do the hard work? How willing are you to go through the hard transitions? How willing are you to survive no matter what and survive only on the sustenance of God's word 
and his presence. Noah, 40 days and nights. Um, Joshua, the 12 spies. Ezekiel was on his side for Judah's sins. Anyone ever read that story? Mm -hmm. He stayed on one side. Did you find that one? Mm -hmm. For how long? 40 days. 40 days. There's 390 on the other side. Though. And 390 <laughs> on the other. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not cool. <laughs> Praise God. Um, oh, here's one. Goliath taunted Israel for 40 days. And what happened? David. David. <laughs> Literally, the kingship and legacy of the nation changed from one family to another. Which didn't happen during those times. If you're the king, my son's the king, his son's the king, his, and they found ways to keep it. Um, and then uh, God gave the end of a 40 days to repent. Um, the story of Elijah running to Mount, to, uh, Mount Horeb. He ran mm -hmm. for 40 days on the strength of the sleep and the food that the angel gave him. Um, uh, for example, in the Catholic Church or uh, in many churches, even Orthodox and even some Protestant, how long is Lent? 40 days. 40 days. How long did Jesus walk around after his death? 40 days. And look at that transition. Talk about a monumental transition. Went from literally the Old Covenant to the New Testament church. Um, so, you know, you have that going on. Now, don't put a timeline on it. They found these 40-day transitions looking back on them. Okay? So... I don't want you to go home, you start going through something, start marking calendar off. Well, day 39, that means tomorrow it's over. Because it might not be. <laughs> it may not be a 40 day, it could be a 40 week. Ugh. It could be a 40 year. Oh, y'all you, don't want to hear that, do you? <laughs> so, um, you can't just identify that you're in a season and sit back and wait and like, well, I've been two weeks in. That's uh, 14 days, so whew. guess I better dig in and get plenty of uh, little Debbie snacks and coffee. And <laughs> <clears throat> the reason why you can't put a timeline on it is because you also have the ten virgins. How many knows the story of the ten virgins? That's why we can't put a timeline on it. Because then you come across a parable of the ten virgins. Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight they were aroused by the shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. This is why we do not put a timeline on it and just say, Well, four is the number. Get me in on it. You can't go off that. How many days are in the month of April? When did we go into quarantine? How many days are in March? 31. So that's 16 and 30 weeks what? 46. Well, that can't be. It's 40 days. 
Well, some people don't want to learn the lessons. <laughs> some people don't want to. And what's funny is you got some people like, somebody didn't want to wear their mask. And some people like, somebody bought into wearing a mask. And we're all right, no one, and everyone else is wrong, right? Right? <laughs> this is why you don't put a timeline on it. Yes, 40 represents transition. In all these situations, it wasn't like, well, I was counting down the days I hit 40, I knew the transition was up. It was more like, as I look back over what God did, and as I began to write about it, I realized I was in this 40 days. You see what I'm saying? Like we said with Ezekiel, well, one was 40 days, the other one was 390. Well, real quick, math tells you 390 is not a derivative of 40. Right? Because 10 times 4 is 40. 9 times 4 is 36. Well, where that add the zero for the 360, 400, what, where 390 come from? My goodness. So you can't put a timeline on like that. But you do have to recognize when you're in a transition season. And there are times, and remember, real quick, who can tell me? I just said a few minutes ago, what did, what's the actual meaning of the word 40? I use three words to describe it. Testing, testing trial, testing. probation. Testing, trial, and probation. Probation's easy. I can do probation. Testing, mm -hmm. trial. <laughs> easy, eh, and old oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so. We are in a transitional season as a church. We've been in a transitional season as a church. In fact, I started the process of this back in November. Where's that 40 days at? Working on finding a structural engineer. That was a fun week. <laughs> and other stuff happened that week. Got calls from other people. But God is bringing us through this process. We're transitioning. We transitioned from being video. First we went from being a church that met, met every week to video church. Now we're transitioning to video and meeting. <laughs> and we're moving forward in this even further. Amen? Any questions? Comments? I'll let you know if your comment is correct or not. <laughs> Some of the looks I just got were like, did he just say that? <laughs> Any questions or comments? I yes. I think when I was researching the best 40 that I found actually isn't in the Bible, but after Judas, after Jesus' crucifixion, it was 40 years when they destroyed the temple. Ooh, 40 That's years when they destroyed the temple. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Anything else? Angela just said, yay, God. <laughs> Yay God, I love that answer. <laughs> Yay God. So, next week we're going to go into a little bit more. We're almost done with our study on transitional seasons. I just glossed over real quick some of this, like the pregnancy, because that's really not anything difficult or anything to talk about. But other than that, all right so next week we're going to be meeting here um at the old town hall at 7 p.m you can get here a little bit early we